Welcome and thank you for joining us for another great video here on Chuckwagon MTG. Today we're going to do something a little bit different, and to explain that, I'm going to turn you over to JJ. Hey everybody, uh, this is JJ, MTG Strategist, hanging with Chuck. Today we are doing straight up cold predictions for Throne of Eldraine. We're in a great little spot before, you know, before they start doing the spoiler season, where we can just make outlandish guesses at what's going to be in this set so so what do we know uh, we've seen some art uh, we've been told it is a combination of Grimm's fairy tales meets Camelot and we've seen one card uh, but for based on that I have about 20 some odd predictions that at least two percent of them should be correct so <laughs> I'm predicting everything so, so, so what we're doing today is I'm going to say an outlandish prediction, and Chuck's going to get give give the reaction to say if if that's a bad idea or that's a good idea. And uh, the way we're so what we're going to start with first is tribes. So I have about ten tribes that I think might be included in uh, in Throne of Eldraine, and uh, they're kind of ranked from most likely to least likely <laughs> or one one that I would really love to see and, and then we'll move into things like equipment mechanics uh, we'll do some random ones uh, that uh, you know maybe a, a couple planeswalker predictions so anything's out there right you know whatever you can imagine could be in this set so with that I will jump right into tribes and my number one tribe that I feel like I could put money on it that it's going to be in there because they referenced the Little Mermaid. I think Merfolk are definitely going to be in the set, or at least uh, focused on to a degree that you can use them as a tribe. Because I think we're losing some in during uh, at rotation. We we are yeah. we are losing some some good fish. Uh, so and I can definitely be behind this one as well. Uh, Merfolk all the way. Um, I love Merfolk. And uh, it should be interesting to see what kind of merfolk uh, we see in this set. Because, uh, yeah, if I, if I was a betting man, I would put money on it, the fact there's going to be some in this set. And it's cool because they, you know, uh, they say they're kind of clean slating this set, where it's a, it's a whole new plane, a whole new idea. So, uh, but I think they, you know, they will bring forth some of these ideas, some of these tribes into this plane because they just fit really well. And with that, my second prediction, uh, which, you know, the Camelot theme, I, we got to have knights, right? We got to have a knight theme or a knight, some sort of knight tribal synergy. And, uh, you know, I think that goes with some of my other predictions that we're going to have some sort of, you know, secondary abilities, equipment maybe, or enchantments that enhance the knight tribe. <laughs> you know, and this this just popped into my mind, and the the chance of it actually being this is is pretty slim. But the off chance that the Camelot they're referring to is not the the original tale of Camelot, but more along the lines of Monty Python's <laughs> Camelot. That would be something that would be truly amazing. If we could get the knights that say neat. Yeah, like a whole <laughs> tribe of them. <laughs> I would play that deck. I don't care how bad it was. I would play that deck every chance I had. That would be a great unstable. All you have to do is say neep, and your opponent <laughs> loses a creature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Uh, but no, I, I think knights could be a, a safe bet. That's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, some of the art they showed was was reminiscent of um, Snow White. So I, I have to think there's going to be a dwarf, some sort of dwarf fism synergy in there. Uh, you know, it, it's a possibility. Some dwarves. <laughs> uh, well, they are kind of a. They've been throughout magic history, so I could definitely see those. Uh coming into play and it is kind of fairy tale esque. Yeah, yeah, very fairy tale. Um, and you know, I do have a, a the next two that I have are, you know, they're kind of I would call them generic tribes that are basically in every set. 
but bears and giants. You know, they had a Jack and the Beanstalk kind of thing for the giants. If they had a, you know, but they've never really committed to a giant uh, tribe. You know, it's always been just a few cards here and there. You know, like maybe two or three in each set where you have a giant this or a giant that. I think they could take this opportunity to, to make giants a uh, like a thing, you know, an, an actual tribe. But but bears, of course, uh, are kind of that's it's a very generic yeah uh, one. You could you could you could make a bear tribal. I think they kind of uh, fumbled the ball when they had um, who, who's the bear lord that you know. Oh, the new bear queen. Oh, no, the, uh, the, the not from Modern Horizons, but the 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 one they had from in that's in standard right now. The the bear that um, gives all creatures who have four oh, power. Oh, um, drawn up in a, one of the decks I play runs him. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. He's that uh, bear. The four or five drop. Yeah, so that you know that bear was I would call it kind of a, a kind of a miss with bear tribal because. Bears are two twos, right? And it's giving everything with four power above enhancement. So really, it kind of get. I think they have an opportunity to do a reset and get a a bear lord in there that will will play in standard. So so bear okay. bears and giants football teams. But I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> um, also, um. The so I threw this in there kind of after bears and giants, but rats. <laughs> okay, you know what? I, I, th- that is plausible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's several. Uh, in fact, um, I think two or three of the actual grim fairy tales yeah. were about uh, were about rats, like the Pied Piper and the like. You know. Yeah. So I was thinking Pied Piper. Maybe you know you can have a Pied Piper as a leader of the rats, some sort of rat type Ooh. artificer just for rats. <laughs> you know, Lord of the Rats. Nice. <laughs> but something like that. You know, I, I I can see that. You know, just drawing from storylines. So. Now, uh, are we losing? Because uh, we currently have. Uh, what's the rat we have in standard right now? Um, oh yeah, the. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I know the one. <laughs> well, wow, bat with rats. There we, go. there we go. There we go. So we got we got the rats and standard, but those are those are nineteen, aren't they? Core nineteen. Yeah, data checking. Okay, so so we're we're going to be losing those, but uh, they actually, I I think that would be kind of fun if you could actually if they print something and not necessarily you know the Pied Piper, but something uh, of that effect that either. Uh, you know, anthems your rats. Oh, wait, or... it's not. It's not relentless rats. It's um, relentless rats is in modern. Um, That's right. Yeah, it's checking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just something. If we get something that actually created rats, yeah. I, I suppose you know. Yeah, yeah, like some sort of rat production. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I mean, it fits in the, it fits in the storyline, you know. It's, it's, mm-hmm. but so that's, uh, that's rats. Um, now the one that I would, I, I put in here also after rats, wolves or werewolves, because, uh, you know, the, the little red riding hood. You know, yep. I, I can mm-hmm. see the, like maybe the, there being some and wolves, uh, wolves specifically, are you know throughout Grimm's fairy tales. They're Okay, so some sort of wolf pack, that, and they haven't really seen that since I think um, like Shadows Over Innistrad, and I I, I think they'd be, uh, you know, you've seen a few wolves here and there, and they just had a um, the uh, what's the one that makes all the wolf pups? Yeah, they have like some wolf synergy that's currently in standard, um, mm-hmm. elf wolf synergy. So I you know I can see them adding a few wolves. I, I don't know if it's going to be a major, a major tribe, but I think it, they're going to put something in there to enhance the wolf tribe. Uh, well, we also just got that um, uh, the wolf lord yes. lady, uh, the green white, yes. I believe. So I, you know that that makes sense uh, between and I actually I just opened up one of those uh, the wolf lord things. So I'm trying to find it in here. 
but this is the wrong stack. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, not only does that fit, uh, it's also, um, it would give a reason of why they made, you know, the, well, I mean, the, the Wolf Lord, the, the one that I can't think of its name of right now, um, he is good on his own. Um, you don't need any other support, but the other one, um, Night Pack Ambush, yes. that's its name. <laughs> Um, the other one, the, uh, green white, um, I mean, she makes the wolves when she comes into play, mm -hmm. but aside from that, there's nothing else. So really, you know, once she comes out and it, well, it does have, she the, does it. um, the fight trigger, the, when it comes, when a wolf comes in and it's, um, yeah, when it, whenever a wolf comes into play, uh, it, it fights target creature. Yeah. Well, and that's what I'm saying. It's so essentially uh it's kind of like it's prepping for more playable wolves yeah. um at least i would hope yeah but I, I could see wolves you know it would fit really well and uh it wouldn't need a lot of um not too much enhancement so i could see them adding it just enough to make it a little more competitive mm-hmm yeah i can be done with wolves and yeah. I, I can see that <laughs> and so for my last two, uh, they're two that I'm hoping for. And since we're talking about, you know, kind of Knights of the Round Table type thing, I think dragons should come back, you know. Uh, they're already, there's already a lot of dragons uh, available. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. I play dragons, you know, constantly on Arena. Uh, but maybe, you know, maybe there's some sort of Lord of the Dragons... Maybe some sort of dragon esque uh, 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 thing that they can they can add to it to to make it a little bit more uh, a little more than it is. Um, but yeah, and my my final one, which I hope hope hope. So this this um, creature type is throughout Grimm's Fairy Tales. It's throughout. It's even in the King Arthur one. So I think. They have to have witches, you know, a a witch, some sort of witch tribal, coven tribal type. I mean, that I think that would be uh, incredible to have the the term coven in this set. I could I could get behind <laughs> that. I could get behind that because there's so there's witches in you know uh, there's like Sleeping Beauty, there's uh, witches in, you know, Morgana from uh, King Arthur is the, the, you mm -hmm. know, the evil witch, and then witches and warlocks are in there. But yeah, I, I think they could do a lot with that idea. And and I'm going to I'm going to segue into a a planeswalker idea, but Morgana. Morgana witch planeswalker cuz so so here's my idea, here's the theory behind that is that um so the 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 mono black well one of the mono black uh uh planeswalkers liliana um it i don't really i can't really think of any other mono black female planeswalker um you know there's i i think soren is is mono black uh in the mm -hmm. new set but the idea of putting uh, building up the character of Morgana as a as a female planeswalker and as a witch, you can really do just about anything. You know, you can the abilities could just be all over the place because witches can you know uh, eat your baby. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Plus one, eat a baby. <laughs> <laughs> That could make for some very intense yeah. games. Yeah, yeah. So I know that's a that's a a very widespreading prediction of ten different of <laughs> ten different tribes: merfolk, knights, dwarves, bears, giants, witches, wolves, rats, and dragons. <laughs> but I think they all fit. I think they fit the archetype. You know, or they have the archetype that fits the story. Yeah. I I, I will agree. Oh, there is one I am surprised you did not name. Which one? Fairies. You know, it would fit. It would 
fit. <laughs> well, no, I'm just, I'm just between uh, the the because I'm actually I'm here at the um, uh, I'm looking over the art that's been released mm-hmm. uh, for the new set, and there is I didn't realize this much of the art had been released, um, but between the references in that and then just the market's reaction to yeah. this set. Um, I mean, everything fairy has just went through the flipping roof. Um, and uh, honestly, I, I think the only real indication we've had of fairies, or at least in the beginning was on that, um, what they call them the invitations yeah, or whatever. Um, it had a picture of, what looked to be a fairy on it. So, um, but actually I'm now looking through here and I'm not seeing anything. Well, the fairy, the art, uh, you know, there is one piece of art. It's the one of the forest with the, the lights inside the trees. Oh, I, I actually just stumbled on that. Which which I think you could probably interpret as, you know, fairies possibly. Yep. But yeah, so but okay, you're right. Okay. Your fairies are prominent uh, throughout Grimm's fairy tales. It's in, you know, and in kind of a, the modern twists on them, like um, uh, Sleeping Beauty, the the three fairies, which it would be cool to mm-hmm. have like a three fairy synergy of you know you get three fairies out and you can make someone <laughs> beautiful and eloquent. I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Oh, Tron, yeah. Tron fairies. <laughs> Tron fairies, you win the game, but then you have to be home by midnight. <laughs> and you leave your shoes oh, behind. Oh my goodness. Oh, and speaking of shoes, let's jump to equipment. Okay. So the number one equipment out of this this set has to be Excalibur. I would be exceptionally remiss if that was not included in this. Um, And it's the mightiest sword ever, so it's got to do something insane. Mm -hmm. You know, kills everybody all the time. (laughs) But yeah, I feel like they would waste an opportunity if they didn't put Excalibur in there. And I know everybody wants it. Everybody wants Excalibur. Uh, Yeah. And uh, yeah. And I don't know what it could do, but it has to be next level, next level power, because we have all the swords, right? We have all these, all the swords in modern, all the, the mm-hmm. different sort of sweat and pain or whatever, you know, all those <laughs> sort of, you know, <laughs> uh, ligaments and bone marrow, and <laughs> but I, th- I think one sword to rule them all. <laughs> you gain control of all swords. <laughs> Now that's gross. Yeah. <laughs> that would... um, also, it's, it, I immediately think of uh, what was that from? Um, I, I don't remember the set, but there was an artifact, a sword uh, called World Slayer. Yes, I have it in one of my decks. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, basically, whenever you deal damage, just it destroys all permanents. <laughs> Yeah, but goodbye everything. Even the thing it's now, attached uh, uh, to. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, no, it, it definitely slays the world. Yeah. Um, you know what I put that on? No, I, I put it on Ilhark. So you could stack the triggers where you you swing in <laughs> you swing in with Ilhark, the, the world slayer trigger hits, and you stack the, put a creature from your hand on the battlefield trigger, so you, it destroys everything, and you're with you're the only person that has anything left on the battlefield to swing for one. It goes back into your hand at the end of that turn, but if it's like you know end of the game and you're down to two people, and uh, you can get that uh, blight steel colossus out to swing in <laughs> after it destroys all the all the permanents, that would be sweet. But that's yeah, mean. but it was kind of like a last ditch <laughs> effort idea. But, yeah, so, rock on, rock so on. Excalibur, and uh, we mentioned um, Cinderella, and I thought a glass slipper of of some sort, a some sort of glass slipper, some sort of shoe. <laughs> but I can see that. Yeah, the glass slipper that you know 
what do you know what do glass slippers do i guess they you know break they break they shatter <laughs> but they you know they they find your true love so maybe if you get the glass slipper and equip it you find your true love <laughs> or you know yep. maybe you have higher toughness i don't know <laughs> it was liliana the yeah. whole time <laughs> she she had me at discard <laughs> Um, the other equipment or artifact that I think we should have is a magic mirror Um, which may be an enchantment of some sort and the magic mirror which allowed the evil witch evil queen to uh, look into it and ask any question and get an answer you should it should have like multiple like multiple modes like once a turn you can uh, look at your opponent's hand, or you could uh, look, at, you know, look at the, you know, scry five or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some but magic mirror that allows you at the beginning of your turn to do something modal. You have choices. But yeah, I you know I could get behind that, or even one that simply. At any point in time, you could see your opponent's hand. And th- that might be a little overpowered. Yeah, they have to play with their hand, uh, hand <laughs> revealed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that that would just that would be. I don't gross. know. That's what Magic Mirror does, <laughs> right? You know, you can see everything that's going on, basically. Well, no, I mean, it's, uh, uh, it would fit story wise, but as a card, I think that would be rather, rather powerful. Yeah. To but. It wouldn't be the first time wizard said, you know what? Nah, it'll be fine. <laughs> Smuggler's crap. <crapper>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a cat that, that blinks a permanent. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah, it's a big deal. Uh, yeah, so, so I think definitely Magic Mirror is going to be in there. Um, and then another, this is a Rumpelstiltskin reference. So, uh, you know, the story of a a uh, young lady who is told to spin gold and she could you know she cuz her i guess her father was bragging that her his daughter is so good with a spinning wheel that she could mm-hmm. spin hay into gold i think there's going to be some sort of spinning wheel you know some sort of spinning wheel that changes okay. th- boring things into awesome things like you know pay so much and you can change a creature you have into a higher power, higher toughness, or you know, a, a flying, or even into something like treasures. You know, where it changes it into Ooh. into you know, like you get that land war elf, you don't need it anymore. You just spinning wheel it into a treasure that you can sack later, you know, before someone kills it. But I like that something like that, something like that. And there's also the spinning wheel is in in Sleeping Beauty as well. You know, she pricks her finger on the spinning wheel and and that's falls right. asleep. That's right. Yeah. So that's my my group of equipments: Excalibur, Glass Slipper, Magic Mirror, and a spinning wheel. I think they gotta have that. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but Excalibur wasn't Excalibur handed from the Lady of the Lake? Mm-hmm. Okay, because I in scrolling through the art here. <laughs> They actually have that, uh, a merfolk in a pond of some sort, and she's reaching up with a sword. So uh, I think you might be spot on there. And she's a witch, right? Witch tribal. (laughs) See, I instantly saw merfolk, Mm -hmm. but that's just because I want merfolk. Mm -hmm. I want their... There should always be solid merfolk in standard. That should just be a blanket rule. Uh, for wizards, but no, looking at it, yeah, that, that that's a witch. <laughs> She's a witch. Burn her. <laughs> All right. She and me into a witch. That's enough. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I can see all of our future deck techs are just going to be riddled with Monty Python esque, you know, Monty Python. Oh, yeah. Games. Yeah. Okay, so the next pile is, um, is, is kind of a mechanics. Yeah, mechanics. Um, and, you know, looking through older mechanics that you think will do no harm in standard, you know, will enhance the game without making it out of control. 
and that fits the theme. I think there's one that stands out above all, and I think it's bestow. I think you could possibly use bestow in standard to great effect because it has that blessing kind of idea, you know, like the the the, the three fairies who blessed um, um, Sleeping Beauty with her name was um, uh, I'll remember her name later. But she blessed, you know, they blessed her with gifts of, you know, speak eloquently, be beautiful, and then, yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah, so I think uh, bestow would be a, a cool idea. And uh, I, can, I can read bestow for you, if you like. Okay. Yeah, that's because uh, that one I actually had to look it up for a second because yeah. uh, I actually didn't remember what it was. So a creature with bestow <laughs> gives you the option to cast it as an aura uh, that enchants a creature, granting that creature you know whatever power, toughness, abilities, or um, you can cast it as a creature itself. You know what? That's now that you explain it. Yeah, that seems like it would fit insanely well. Uh, with the the idea of what they're trying to do, and it, it definitely I, it wasn't a broken mechanic. Yeah. Uh, at least not to you know, my remembrance, but um, but yeah, that would fit really well, and it was a, a decent mechanic. So I, I like that one, and I give that both a thumbs up. Which means so. you know, and speaking on the idea of the en the enchanting creatures, we could have enchantment creatures come back which might just fit perfectly well into this set you know mm -hmm. and you know everybody likes enchantment creatures especially in EDH that is, that is true people love them yeah which means there's probably going to be some sort of enchant uh, huge enchantment removal which I I would think so yeah. I would think like, so in, not the five mana cost but like more like the three or four mana like a little bit lower where it's just focused on enchantments and not artifacts creatures and all that enchantment board wipe. yeah yeah complete enchant i mean there's a two mana enchantment board wipe in in modern edh so yeah you, can, yeah. you know bump it up a little bit not to replace it but you can use it again but it's a mm -hmm. good solid sideboard card yeah um so that's that's the first one bestow and uh my next one uh so because there are so many of these things happening in grim's fairy tales which I've been spent a couple of days reading through a whole bunch of them, and they all have this um, idea of transforming people into animals, like some sort of like transformation type thing. And I so I think something like a transmute or a transfigure. I think more transfigure because it's going to be on the battlefield. And uh, let me read read transfigure for you. Um, so, a transfigure a keyword ability that lets players search their library for a replacement creature uh, creature card. So, uh, it's playable only if the permanent with transfigure is on the battlefield, and uh, it can fetch only a creature. And this was a future sight card or a future sight mechanic. Okay. So, I think transfigure or some sort of transformation mechanic. Uh, so, transmute isn't. It's kind of like it, but not really, because the card with transmute, uh, it's the card in your hand. So a card with transmute, ha you pay you pay a cost, and you discard that card, and then seek out another card in your library with the same converted mana cost. Okay. As, as the one you discard. So, so transmute or transfigure. I think more towards the transfigure side. Okay. okay that's that actually that. That seems like it would fit too, um, and honestly, I I don't think I've ever had any experience uh, with transmute uh, or transfigure. I don't think I've ever had uh, had to encounter that. Yeah, and it's good if you have kind of a toolbox deck uh, to transmute into a into a card into a a card that you need. You know, grab that reclamation mm -hmm. sage to hit their artifact or enchantment or you know you know it, it's more toolboxy so i think it's it's yeah. fairly safe to put into standard and with the idea of transmuting i think we have to have back in standard turn to frog 
Yeah, uh, I think actually, you know, there is there is uh, in the art. Yeah. Uh, there's the one now. It's it's the king uh, that's been turned to a frog, <laughs> so it might be referencing. Um, I know that's one of the fairy tales as well. Yeah, the frog but, prince. Uh, <laughs> yes, the frog prince. But yeah, actually, that that seems like it would be spot yeah, on. I think I think you know they'd be passing up on an opportunity to put turned to frog in standard, which everybody loves turned to frog. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so that um, let's see. So um, you know the uh, I, well, I put this in there. I put coin flip in as a as a mechanic to have in here, more based on kind of the. Um, the idea of adding variability to standard and I think this set you know you know the idea of it being more earth based um, with kind of like the the medieval times with merchants and gambling and and stuff like that that idea I thought you know maybe putting a, a few coin flip ideas in there in the in the night uh, tribe to kind of enhance play and add more variability where sometimes you win sometimes you lose based on a coin flip gotcha yeah. uh, <clears throat> myself personally uh, I don't think the coin flip is a good mechanic it's awful but it's a mechanic I love <laughs> nonetheless yeah, it's awful and I will tell you <laughs> that it's awful because I had a, a mirage or no a, a mirror mirage mirror what's the one that uh, when you play a creature, you flip coins until you get you, until you get it wrong, and it creates a copy of oh um, mirror or something. Uh, yeah, it's the red seven drop yeah, or something, yeah, or yeah. yes. So I played. I was playing EDH yesterday, and I played a Blight Steel Colossus at the very end of the game, <laughs> and it made. I had two two opponents left, and it made two copies with haste, and they didn't have blockers. So I was like. <laughs> It was by the skin of my teeth. All of our life totals were down into the single digits, and uh, it was it was a beautiful ending. But yeah, but yes, yeah, so, that is wonderful. So the idea of a coin flip, I think it would fit in there. And uh, you know, it's not. I don't think it's tied to the storyline, but I think it's more tied to kind of the uh, the heart of medieval times, like that medieval idea. Okay. Um, my next one, uh, breadcrumbs. So Hansel and Gretel, breadcrumbs. So they drop breadcrumbs to find their way back home. And I kind of, I put this out on Twitter a little bit just discussing it. Uh, but the idea of having a breadcrumb mechanic that leads you through your library somehow. Like, you know, that um, you, like you crack a breadcrumb. <laughs> Like, like it, you know, you create so many breadcrumbs and then, you know, one leads to the other or somehow like to some sort of condition you can build. But the idea of putting a, a breadcrumb mechanic that then calling it that breadcrumbs <laughs> or maybe drop a breadcrumb and whenever a creature with a breadcrumb on it, a breadcrumb uh, counter. Whenever it dies, it returns to your hand instead of in the graveyard. Something simple like that, that, you know, return home. Or it goes to the top of your library, or it does something like that. But the idea of a breadcrumb mechanic. That, uh... <laughs> I know, right? That one's... <laughs> it's out there. <laughs> that that one's kind of out there. Um, plausible, possibly, um... I, I think the the second rendition of that, uh, where it simply puts something back, if they if they found a way to be able to, I guess, uh, like as you were saying, uh, show you the way through your deck or find your way through your deck, uh, I think that would be be able to probably be broken quickly, and then all you would see is, is combo decks, and that's it. Uh, modern wise, um, I really don't. I mean, we still might have some of the problem in standard, but modern, essentially, that's what you would see. But that would still be a fun 
and definitely on point mechanic uh, for the set. Um, of course, then during pre-release, they would be required uh, to provide donuts and all that, <laughs> so we can make the the bread crust. crust. Yeah, you know, it would be cool. Like maybe if you had a a creature with the bread crumb ability, that when it dies, you search your library and find the a, a card with the exact same card and put it on the battlefield. So it has this kind of continuity, kind of like transmute without the cost or something like that. But I really want I okay. really want to see that. I just want to say I put a breadcrumb counter on my <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay, so my next one um, so just hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> um, there's a story of you know Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and there was this witch and she did this thing where she gave her this gift that when she ate it she fell asleep it was a poison apple so poison bring an infect back to standard <laughs> oh my goodness oh, okay so this is the point in the video where we have two different types of viewers we have the first one that's going, that would be absolutely amazing. <laughs> and then there's the second Someone group. Someone's subscribing that right now. Subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> exactly. Well, then you've got the second group, and chances are whatever they're viewing it on, this on, now has a cracked <laughs> screen, and they're just screaming obscenities. Yeah. <laughs> but the idea of a poison apple, right? Poison apple is a good, it's a good card name. And... Maybe you give someone the poison apple, and they get an infect counter uh, at the beginning of their upkeep. And we just brought proliferate back, mm -hmm. too. I'm just saying <laughs> infect. Why not? Why not, why not <coughs> mess up all of standard? <laughs> <laughs> so poison, the idea of poison. Um, and... Uh, so there's one that I think is definitely coming back, uh, this enchantment that's definitely coming back, and I'm pretty sure it'll be the first thing that everyone predicts, that sagas are coming back. Because they, okay. they fit so well into the storyline of uh, you know the different chapters of the saga as they go off. And, but yeah, I, 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 can almost, I could, would say 100% sagas are coming back. I would say it's a pretty safe assumption because yeah, it 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 fits kind of what they're trying to do, kind of the narrative, and plus, I love the way sagas look, yeah. and maybe it's because it's just we've never had anything like that before. But I'm a fan. Yeah, and it, I I think it's cool because usually the first uh, the first effect you can use right then. Like, it's a real effect. You know, they have to sacrifice a creature. Mm -hmm. Your creatures can tap for mana. You know, they, you know, opponent will, um, or you search through your deck. First, or, you know, you know, look at the first few cards and put some in your graveyard. Something like that. It has a real effect. But then there's these additional ones that it gives them something to have to answer. And that's why I think sagas, awesome sagas, and then enchant a lot of enchantment removal or a, or a enchantment board wipe. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. So so that's that's my mechanics pile. Um, I do think there are there's one more mechanic. <laughs> so hear me out. <laughs> Open mind. You're in fairy tale world, right? Mm -hmm. And you're out there, and you're in the wilderness, and you're you know, say, or maybe say you're this young lady who's got three stepsisters who are oppressing you, right? Oppressing you and not letting you go to the ball. There's one thing that you need, that you need at that moment. That you look up into the sky and you pray for this. You need a miracle. <laughs> so, hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> what about the miracle mechanic? <laughs> that would be 
you know, tailored for standard. Yeah. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Have we seen Miracle more than once? Uh, let me check. I, I don't think we have. I like it. I I really enjoy um, the the whole miracle aspect because it's you're honestly relying more on chance. Yeah. Uh, you know, for the most part. Um, and I will tell you what, it's uh, I actually <laughs> in my sliver deck, mm-hmm. um, my sliver EDH, I run Bonfire the Damned. Mm-hmm. Um, I know it's a horrible idea, but I like that card. So, And the look I've gotten so many times when I go to draw that card and then I leave it separate from my hand and say, okay, let me do some math here. And all of a sudden, it's just all focuses on you. The sweat starts yeah. building up. <laughs> and and, if, you, <laughs> and like, if you had like a, a, you know, a breadcrumb thing where you could search your library and put a, a, a card on top of it, you, oh, that you grab that gross. miracle card. And you know mm-hmm. you you terminus them, you know. I mean, it doesn't kill everything. It just puts everything back into the library. But for those of you yeah. that don't know what miracle is, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's usually it's a spell that has a really high cost. And uh, if it's if it's the card you draw for your turn, it has a super cheap cost. So so like we said, terminus uh, is a six CMC spell to put all creatures at the bottom of their owner's library. So all creatures at the bottom of their opponent's library. But if you miracle that card, you pay one. You pay uh, one white. So I think they could tailor miracle to be in standard. Yeah, I, I could be down with that. I'm, I'm holding to my prediction. I think that's going to happen. So infect miracles. <laughs> all right, so... Um, a creature, uh, a creature that I think they should. Uh, so I only have I have make uh, I have one creature and one planeswalker prediction left. Okay. Right. So did you want to review any of the ones we had so far? I think the mechanics bestow coin flip, some sort of transformation like um, transmute or trans or transfigure. And then a mm-hmm. breadcrumb, which is more like a transmute, where you can search your library or something like that. Sagas, poison, infect coming back. <laughs> so that's, mm-hmm. those are our predictions for well, mechanics. Now, something to quick hit on for that one, because uh, before infect, there was simply poison. Um, so I wonder if they would go that route, yeah. where instead of making it full-blown infect, it's you know, just poison. Oh, right. Just give someone a poison counter, and if they get ten poison counters, they die. Uh, well, if if I'm not mistaken, back when it was just poison, it only affected creatures, if I'm not mistaken, or I'm wrong on that. Hey, let me, Never mind. I'm wrong, I'm wrong on that. <laughs> let me check my All references. Right. That's it. <laughs> Now that I think about it, I think when Infect came around, they errated it. Errata? Errata to them? Errata. That word. <laughs> um, so, and, and I'm trying to think now, and I think it, yeah, it does. It, it, it treats it as actual Infect. So never mind I said and any of it. It's called that. Poisonous. That's the... Poisonous. Poisonous. That's right. Uh, yeah, so it just gives gives players another... another um, counter on them of poison which usually there's there's a you know usually get 10 poison counters and you die yeah yeah but but that you know i I, it would be a bold move (laughs) a bold move Uh, there would be an uproar in the community yes (laughs) i can i can tell you that (laughs) there would be um hate and discontent gnashing of teeth but it fits it's yeah. and it's not a broken mechanic. It's just one that can you know that can be broken when you're not looking for it. You, know, you can you can protect Wait, yourself. I see. Didn't we just get get that uh, artifact that uh, gives your creature plus ten plus ten and loses flying? Just one hammer. <laughs> <laughs> one hammer. <laughs> Which I built. A, so I built a deck 
So w for every one deck I give you, I have like ten. <laughs> and one of the decks I just called put the hammer on something and hit him in the face. <laughs> That's what I was... So, it, and it could have been anything like a Llanowar Elf or, you know, I didn't care. So it was all about just putting the hammer on something and swinging it. And it's really fun because <laughs> once you... Because it takes eight to equip. But uh, there's a... Uh, there's a two-mana creature out that you, it, you can pay two or you can tap it for two and use it to activate abilities of artifacts. So, so okay. it, it brings it down a little bit. It, I mean, it's not manageable in any way, and it's a terrible idea. But sometimes you just <laughs> want to put a hammer on something and smack someone in the face. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we have we've we've predicted a lot so far. We've predicted mm. a ton of stuff. You know, we're we're, we're predicting merfolk and knights and dwarves, hoping for witches. Hoping for witches, hoping for dragons. You know, we predicted turn to frog, which is, I think it's just a mandatory inclusion. You know, yeah. We predicted Excalibur, Glass Slipper, Magic Mirror, Spinning Wheel. A uh, bunch of mechanics, uh, some of them which were obscene. <laughs> I'm going to lose subscribers. Uh, and then, um, one. so one creature that I think they should have in there, and that's the Lady in the Lake. Um, the lady in the lake is the one who gifted Excalibur or holds Excalibur and gives it to the right, you know, when gives it back to King Arthur after he, after mm -hmm. he pulled it out of the rock, which, oh, maybe there's a rock in there somewhere. Uh, but so lady in the lake and I see lady in the lake as some sort of, um, kind of bag of holding type thing like you give when you want to store Excalibur you throw it into the, the lake and the lady in the lake will hold it for you and give it back to you um, so maybe you know the lady in the lake has a synergy with Excalibur you know where you can kind of like remember like God Pharaoh's gift and you know how you can uh, it had the two artifacts that one of them seeks out on the other one and you can put it on the battle mm -hmm. so I, something like that, like Lady in the Lake can seek out Excalibur, but, but yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I kind of like that. I kind of like yeah. that. And I have one final prediction. I know I predicted basically four sets in this one set, but <laughs> <laughs> if you guess everything, then you're right. <laughs> Right? That is very true. So I, that is very I true. I guess bears. <laughs> Insightful. <No. laughs> but uh, <laughs> giants and bears. Okay. So my final final prediction um, for a planeswalker. So it's going to be hard for them to pull planeswalkers from the past into this because they're trying to start clean with a new, uh, new slate. But mm -hmm. I think there's one character that deserves his own I would say you know high mythic but really deserves a planeswalker and that's Merlin I think Merlin deserves a planeswalker of of high regard you know it's kind of a clean slate where you can make this the like a wizard a wizard synergy you know like you have Soren who buffs up the vampires maybe mm -hmm. you have Merlin who buffs up the wizards? You know. You know, and that would actually kind of make sense that Merlin wasn't actually just a wizard, but he was actually a planeswalker. Yeah. That I like that. I like that a lot. That would be awesome. That would be amazing. Yeah, and and so you know, to be completely honest, I've watched other people's prediction videos. And I've heard, you know, some very safe predictions, which I think the heart of our show is doing completely unsafe things. <laughs> so wild, outlandish predictions. And I, I hope, I hope they put a Merlin Planeswalker in there. It's, I think it would be, it, just the name inspires deck building, you know? Play, yeah. I play Merlin. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt. 
<laughs> just yeah. Oh but lord. The, so, so the the Merlin would be the Soren of wizards. That's that's what I predict. I can fully get behind that, and I I I, I see that being plausible. That's that's actually plausible. Yeah, and that's that's all the all the crazy notes I wrote down that I just kept. <laughs> I think some of these I wrote and lined out like, mm -mm, that's a terrible idea. But, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Because oh. right now, what we have, what we've seen, um, is there's one, one creature and one artifact they've spoiled. Uh, the creature they spoiled was Chulain, Teller of Tales. Mm -hmm. and, which has a, you know, really cool kind of commander effect. Uh, and then Arcane Signet, which everyone in EDH both uh, lauded and lamented at the same time. Like, oh, yes. it's the worst and the greatest thing ever. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, but yeah, so I think, you know, based on the sketchy knowledge that we have right now, I think all of these are solid predictions. <laughs> uh, that's what we also did have that one card that we don't know the name or anything that it does, but that little trapper girl. Yeah. That's, um, Goldilocks and the three bears. Twisted. Yeah. No, that's not Goldilocks. Twisted. That is, <laughs> that is 100. Dude, she has a bloody, it looks kind of like a cleaver, yeah. but even more so if you <laughs> zoom in on her face, that is not good. That is the the female version of Hannibal Lecter, yeah. right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> although uh, there is the the uh, the second uh, version of her um, that looks much more normal and doesn't have that evil evil grin. Yeah, but she's holding um, a bear trap like she's getting ready to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, she is. Well, she's she's getting ready to go, but the other one, like, she has this smile on her face, like she just enjoyed the last seven hours of skinning that bear with a pocket knife. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, I am kind of excited to see. I want to know what she does because if you look her, whatever her secondary thing is, it costs seven. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't oh, know. Yeah, maybe it's the, remove your opponent's the face, book, like the little book thing in the on the card. It has like yeah. yeah. Maybe it's sagas inside the the creatures. Like so. Oh, okay, like a, I see what you're saying. Enchantment creature. But yeah. That has a saga effect. You know. Interesting. Interesting. That's some next level. You know, they should just hire us to design cards. They really should. They really <laughs> should. I mean. You know, as long as I can work from home and, you know, well, that's about yeah. it. As long as I can work from home. <laughs> I get fired the first day. I want a bear that explodes and kills everybody. <laughs> like, you're fired. <laughs> we'll call it the unbearable yeah. bomb. I would think I would think of a movie title like we normally do and then try to build, build a, you know. It seems like you have a lot of reference references in here to Ralph Macchio from Karate Kid. <laughs> yeah. And there's a problem with it? The crane kick. <laughs> right in the face. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, so that's it for my predictions. <coughs> I, I, I hope people can take these, you know, analyze them in their laboratories, and, you know, get on board. We need we need infect in Merlin back in standard. <laughs> and then you know what? Tell you, I, I'm gonna go one step further with this. That if at least we'll say a nice even number, seventy percent. If seventy percent of his predictions here came true or end up coming true, um, I will personally eat a pack of these cards. <laughs> oh man, I. <laughs> I'm gonna send over some like some salad dressing or something. You know, ranch. <laughs> Put ranch on it. You can eat anything. It's there a we ranch go. <laughs> oh yeah. Because I am, I am incredibly smart, and I'm so accurate. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, yeah. See, 
Now they're going to, someone from Wizards is going to see this and be like, you know what? Emergency, change this, <laughs> the set real quick. I just want to see this guy eat this, so this is what we're going to do. Now you just said, you know, uh, a pack, so it could be like a, you know, a pack of cheese or something, so. <laughs> okay, you know what? Just to, to solidify this, I will eat a booster pack, not the wrapper, because that would probably be unhealthy. Yeah. But the cards inside like the cards are thrown be healthy. out drain. <laughs> the, the cards are the health. Well, I, I, I think the cards would be slightly more healthy than the, the plastic yeah. wrapper. Probably not. Um, but yeah, if at least 70% of these predictions are correct, I'll go ahead and eat a pack. So I think it, we, we'll be able to shine a light through you and see the blue line. In there. <laughs> well, that's how we're going to you know prove I did yeah. it. Aside from me doing it on camera. <laughs> So well, that means we have to meet back after the set drops, once the spoiler season comes out, and reassess our predictions. See how how far off we were. That is true. We can do that. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, that's all I have for you. Any last minute uh, predictions on your side? No, honestly, I haven't put. Uh, I guess nearly as much thought <laughs> into it as as you have. I mean, I've got things I would like to see, mainly uh, the merfolk, and um, I, I'm really hoping that, I mean, judging from the art that we've seen, um, they might be going that way, but the fairy tales, uh, they have a certain type of I don't know, kind of art and look to them. I hope we can see some really amazing art come out of this. Uh, where you can get that fairy tale feeling out of it. Yeah, and we've already seen some beautiful pieces and oh, yeah. just oh, yeah. inspiring. Um, but you know, it'll be fun to get back and t get together and talk about just the art. You know, the art itself, because it's. Uh, I think they're going to come up with some of the like, uh, you know, next level art. Yeah. 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 Nope. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you all very much for watching. If you like what you saw here today, do us a huge favor. Click the like button, hit subscribe, and hit the bell notification button so you can tell we have new stuff coming out. And then be sure to share this with your friends, your family, your loved ones, and your pets. Everyone could use a little more magic in their lives. Once again, thank you very much for watching. And as always, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter at MTG. Bye, everybody. <laughs>